Hi everyone, Tatiana Kolovu, and this is the May edition of Stronger, my LinkedIn newsletter that I publish and I audio record on LinkedIn, but on YouTube, I create a video just for you. It makes it a little bit more interesting. May 2023 is Global Employee Health and Fitness Month. And some of you know that I have a very near and dear spot in my heart for movement in fitness. And I wanted to preview that. I would like to talk a little bit about it. And in this newsletter, I talk about the five reminders for daily health and wellness. So let's get started here. Is it just me or is it that whenever we procrastinate on our fitness sessions, we never get it done? If I don't go out first thing in the morning, I procrastinate the rest of the day, and then I find all sorts of excuses and other things that get in the way, whether if it's going out for a walk or a run, or if I go to the gym in the evening, it's packed, so then I have more excuses of why I don't want to go. But one thing is for sure, it's how I feel after I work out. For me, movement creates focus. It creates concentration. Sometimes it's problem solving. Sometimes it's, uh, it's brainstorming of new ideas. So I feel so much better after an exercise session is finished that I wanted to remind you all that uh, we all can share in that. So a good exercise session is supposed to help you have that clarity and that focus. So if you think that it has to be regimented and be done at the same time in a certain, a certain dis duration, you've got to think again, because just moving is what matters. And some of the research uh, is telling us this. So for example, some gentle yoga or a leisurely stroll, or even getting up off your computer and walking around your house, walking to get the mail in your mailbox. Those are the types of things you want to think of doing when I talk about movement. The journal, American Journal of Preventative Medicine measured a group that walked at low intensity for 11 minutes, just 11 minutes per day. And that yielded a considerable reduction in cardiovascular disease. And another study in the British Journal of Sports Medicine found a simple or a simply <clears throat> standing up every 20 minutes, I was talking about taking a break from your computer, doing that improved metabolic rate and regulated glucose levels. <clears throat> you see all sorts of ads on social media about glucose levels. So that's a really important part of what I wanted to share with you. And then I broke it down in sort of five reminders for us to incorporate in our everyday life. The first reminder has to do with fuel. And I really mean that in that sense. My first job was in a very forward-thinking hospital-based wellness program. I live in Bloomington, Indiana, and I remember driving an hour there and an hour back in Columbus, Indiana. So Columbus Regional Hospital had health educators, and I was one of them. And I remember telling people, or at the time we would say, your body is your most highest prize um, engine that you have to fuel well. So if you think of food as fuel for this engine that needs to be able to keep moving, and by the way, this engine needs to keep pumping and constantly stay in shape so that it can keep your body well oxygenated with blood and all the organs running, it's really important that we put good fuel into our body. So adding some valuable, nutritiously valuable foods, and in the newsletter I list things like uh, kale and salmon and almonds and, and lentils. And let's see, what else do I have here? Blueberries, just nutrients, dense foods. So make an effort, not just to put those foods in front of you, but you have to get them at the grocery store, bring them to your house, and then you have to avoid all the other junk. I don't know about you, but we're all going back to work and people have dishes with candy and snacks all the time in our kitchen and our office. I end up eating stuff that I probably would never reach for before. Another thing I suggest that we do as we try to fuel better is not to bring some of the stuff in the house at all. For me, my, my biggest weakness is salt vinegar chips. If I we have a bag in the house, I'm going to end up eating most all of it. And that's not good. So whatever we put in front of us, we consume. So for good fueling, environmental control is critical. Obviously, I started by talking about movement and moving in general is uh is is fundamental for so many reasons mentally and physically it keeps us much uh, much more well so in uh, some of the additional tips that I give you is 
to get it done first thing in the morning if you can. We're not all morning people. I've kind of become one. I used to work out first thing in the morning when the kids were little because that's the only time I had to myself. Schedule it on your calendar, a recurring occurrence, and it's a, an appointment with yourself. You want to walk to the store, walk to the coffee shop, walk to the bookstore. And if you live in a place where you don't get a chance to do that, you may want to park your car, walk to where you need to go and park back. You can see the birds, hear the birds. I thought that since we were talking about movement, we it would be cool to be outside. Another suggestion was to join a group activity, maybe a dance class, a pickleball league, or a cycling class. I teach those, and people like the camaraderie and the socialization of that. Um, I tell you to go on short, intense bouts of movement. I'll talk about intensity next. And then in the newsletter, I created a short video talking about the most important piece of equipment that we all have in our house, hopefully we do, is a pair of exercise shoes and how I sometimes, as an idea, put them on in the morning on a weekend and I don't take them off until I do my exercise. Or another thing you can do is keep them in your car and if your kids' practice runs long or if you get a chance to walk to lunch or you can park and walk somewhere when it's a beautiful day like it is today, I highly recommend that you do that. Now let's talk a little bit about intensity because if you're going to be well and if you are going to focus on health, intensity is important. But don't think you have to intensify in 30 to 40 minute regimented sessions because this is really cool. This is where some of the research tells us new things that are important. Short bursts of exercise intensity are very beneficial. So for example, walking up and down steps, doing 10 squats, doing 10 wall push-ups or push-ups um, in any surface if go, doing them on the floor are too hard, doing lunges and doing low impact jumping jacks even in place to get your heart rate up. So we don't want to just work in a steady pace. We want to increase our intensity with that interval. So our heart again gets, gets stressed a little bit and gets to be stronger as it, it does. And here's some of the research um, that speaks to this too, these exercise bites uh, when you reach a, a point, and I will talk about intensity next specifically, when you reach that that point where you are out of breath, you need to take a shower, that's when it really counts. And that's where the engine has worked. So if you need to shower after an intense short few bouts of exercise, you've done the intensity right. So the final, or not final, the fourth of the fifth tips that I have, I've talked about movement so much and intensity, but believe it or not, being still even for a few minutes uh, of the day, really are it, it is really what we need quite often in our crazy lives. So we talk about movement and now we talk about finding equilibrium. So think about finding a place where maybe you put noise canceling uh, earbuds on and you don't have, the sun is also coming out. The noise canceling earbuds allow you to find sort of that cocoon or quiet space. Uh, I, I link in the newsletter, Ariana Huffington has loves and talks about box breathing, the inhaling for four, holding for four, exhaling for four, especially when things get really crazy. Shut everything down and see if you can take just a few minutes of stillness. Maybe if you work from home, you have a special place outside, as you can see here, uh, in the yard, or you can separate yourself and take away distractions and just get one or two or three minutes of that stillness. I also use music. I love that uh, way of just maybe songs are what, three, three and a half minutes. They provide that that quiet time, even if it's white noise or if it's something that's really subdued. There's no fun words and music. I also in the newsletter share one of my favorite yoga poses and trust me, you don't have to balance much. You do it laying on the floor with your feet on the wall. So the final suggestion that I have that I find very interesting, you may wonder why does Kolovu know all of this and is interested? My first degree was in exercise science. So I'm a certified exercise physiologist through the American College of Sports Medicine. So I'm a little bit of a geek liking to look up all the kind of research that is there. Fueling your brain with activity is really critical. Look, li listen to some of this research. So for example, moving is not just good for your body, it's good for your brain as well. A study measured uh, and published in the Journal of Applied Physiology, Nutrition and Metabolism, this is why I have to look at my notes, has subjects climbing stairs, I was talking about stairs earlier, 
And then they completed cognitive tests measuring brain function and memory. So the control group usually doesn't get to do anything, but the activity group, they did all of this movement and then they were faster in the way that they thought and they remembered things more. So beyond the physical movement, one to two minutes of intervals of stair climbing, it, it cr creates better accuracy and faster reaction time. Just cognitively, it's so much better for us. So think about fueling, think about moving, think about pushing intensity, think about being still and think about enhancing brain function. I close the newsletter by pointing to something I just did today for a LinkedIn Live, which is broadcasted on the platform of LinkedIn. I did a 35 minute workout. Now, if you really wanna see it, you can follow me on LinkedIn. I think we're gonna put some QR codes here for you to do that. But if you send me a question, I can show you the link and share. It's 35 minutes, it's called multi-cardio because I was on a bike. I own a fitness, co-own a fitness studio in Bloomington, Indiana called Ethos Fitness. But I was coaching either where you're on a treadmill, you're walking or running outside, you could be on a rower, you can be on an elliptical, you can be on a stair climber, any of this works and counts. So we did 35 minutes of movement and I said to them, I hope I'm not blowing my credibility uh, by doing this, but I really believe in it and I really hope that you can add some movement and that you can get motivated to do a little bit of something. Anything counts uh, based on what you heard from all of the research that I shared with you. So five things. Thanks for following. Every one of my LinkedIn newsletters from now on will also be little videos. Enjoy. And again, follow me on LinkedIn if you need more of this. Take care. Bye-bye.